Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I will start my playthrough session of World of Warcraft, the board game. Are you ready to explore the misty eaves of the Silver Pine Forest, the hills of the hinterlands or the rotten corruption of the Plaguelands? Are you ready to set forth on a great adventure, building your skills and prowess while collecting equipment and artifacts of legend and power? Are you ready to set yourself against the overwhelming will of a great enemy such as kel Tuzat or the mighty Nefarian? Above all, are you ready to lead your faction to honor and dominance of Atheroth? Enter the world of Warcraft. Usually this wouldn't be the right fit for my channel because it's really best when played with four to six players. But luckily a great guy on the geek, I don't know his real name, but he goes under the name of Sonic Hedgehog stuff, came up with these relatively straightforward solo rules or pretty much also cooperative rules where you take over one of the factions and I decided to play this game as the alliance. This was more or less a coin draw. So you will see Sundry Darkshine and Shailara Witherblade try to defeat the mighty Nefarian. This seems to be a pretty tough one and I have to be honest with you I only played the game I think two or three times in the past and I played it with the normal mode of the rules really playing with all six players and I think each game took it at least I don't know seven to eight hours or so of course with a little break in between but this read can take quite a while so rest assured I will definitely do some errors in respect to the rules even though they are pretty straightforward to be honest but expect me to do a lot of bad decisions when it goes for leveling up my characters which items to go for and I would really like you to whatever send in your comments and tell me what I should be doing next. Nefarian will start the game here at the Overlook Cliff. So let's place that little token there. It's really a pity that they didn't provide a proper, let's say, figure for those overlords. There is really a hell of a lot of minis in this game. And yeah, they more or less left out those overlords. But yeah, what can I do? And the way how he more or less makes the lives for us relatively tough is because he's going to move towards the bulwark here and this guy moves through event cards there's a little number printed on the bottom right of each event card i think it's from zero to three and yeah he moves that many spaces towards this space and whenever he reaches that space this will trigger the end of the game in the normal game the stronger faction would go first so you have to engage him then and in the in those if they're not a successful defeating them, then it would be the weaker faction and so on this solo or in the cooperative mode it's pretty much only one faction who would take him out and apparently if we are not successful we lost the game there's a second condition how we can lose this game and this is when this turn track reaches this space here and if we haven't defeated the overlord until then we would also have lost the game there aren't many tweaks for the core rules with this solo rules and this is the main reason why I went for those because they're really really simple. Sonic Hedgehog put a lot of thoughts into how to reinterpret some of those event cards and I come to those as we draw them and one additional thing that you are doing when using those rules are those additional independent creatures so whenever you are supposed to draw an event card you roll some dice and then you would spawn additional blue creatures blue creatures are independent creatures which you have to engage when you enter a space so they will really hinder you on your road and they get more tough the more the game progresses but I will also explain this mechanic when we stumble upon our first event card shouldn't take that long and that's pretty much how you play World of Warcraft solo the only little additional thing that you have to do whenever you have taken your turn you will move the turn track two spaces ahead instead of only one so in total you will also only have 15 turns yeah in order to level up and yeah defeat the overlord 
Before we get started, let's have a closer look at Sandra here, who seems to be a warlock of some sort. Her special ability says weapon specialization. She always starts the game with a reroll. She also starts the game with some equipment here already, which she can use right away. Those are not actual cards. They're really printed on her character sheet. So she has this Gravestone Scepter. She has the Worn Staff. Both of them give her blue and a gray die, which is definitely helpful when engaging in a combat. And she also starts this game with this Azure Silk Hood here, which is pretty much some kind of an armor. And our second hero is Shailara. Her special ability says Shadow Melt. Start of the first combat round, add blue die to your dice pool. Only true for the very first combat round of each fight of course, but definitely useful. She has those stances. They are typical for those warriors. So she starts each combat round with this red die in her dice pool. Definitely helpful. Here she has Charge, which pretty much um, gives her one energy at the start of the dice pool step. This is really, really useful, but of course she has to go back to her normal limit at the end of the round or combat, but still she can use a lot of energy within her fight rounds. And then she has her Rusty Sword, which gives her another red die, and her Slark Skin provides her one green defense die. Shalara has four health and one energy. And I forgot to mention the same for Sandra. She starts the game with only two health but four energy, which is definitely quite a lot. So she's definitely the thinker of the team. And Nefarian is pretty badass. So he has seven threat, 12 attack, and 26 health, which is really quite a lot. And there are various ways for within those solo rules how Nefarian can gain a lot more health points. So this is really something that we have to make sure he's not collecting that many health points until we have to engage him. As our heroes belong to the Alliance, they start both here in South Shore. And as part of setup, we have to spawn four quest cards. So we have three of those gray quests. Those are really the relatively easy starting quests. And we also start the game with one green quest. And there will always be four quests available. I cannot quite remember if there is a condition under which there might be one more quest could be, cannot quite remember it, but normally we will always have four active quests available. So let's have a look at the very first one, Fishy Business. The ranger shows you the map of Fenris Isle. Fenris Keep has become a key stronghold of the Scorch in this area, he says. But the Alliance can mount an extended campaign against the Scorch with these murlocs at our back. We must drive these wild things out. Yeah, so what we have to do now, we have to spawn one blue enemy and this is a Scarlet Crusader and our real quest creature is a Murloc here, which we have to spawn at Fenris Isle. So let's do that. So let's place the Scarlet Crusader here onto the ruins of Alterac. So this is now really an enemy we have to engage whenever we are in the space and have an action. The ne next action always must be to challenge those blue creatures. And the Murloc goes here to Fenris Isles. Normally you put a blue token next to this to really mark this as a quest or an active quest for the Alliance. It's important for the normal competitive mode of the game in this core version. There aren't any red quests out there, but I will do it anyway to really show, hey, this is a quest we have to complete. The next gray quest is the ghoulish harvest. The sentinel stares north up the road toward Terran Mill. This stretch of road has become one of the bloodiest battlefields in Hillsbrad. The worst thing about the battles is the ghoul packs that follow in their wake, feeding off the flesh of the fallen. So we have to place one ghoul to Terran Mill, which happens to be just around the corner of our starting space. So let's also put a token next to it. But again, we always know that green or red creatures are quest creatures, but it doesn't hurt to put the quest token next to it. And the last gray quest is the Island of the Muck Dwellers. Used to be Purgation Isle supplied most of the clams you find in the taverns of South Shore. 
These days, the only thing you will like to find there is a murloc spear in your eye. So we have to spawn, I think, a blue, is it a knoll? I think so. And another of those murlocs. So the Gnoll goes here to Koran's dagger, which is really a problem because he's really blocking our way up north to Fenris Island. Those guys, they are really just yeah, a block. They don't provide any experience points whatsoever. They are just in our way. But the quest creature will be spawned here on Purgation Isle. So we can definitely make it there without yeah, having to engage a blue independent creature unless we are drawing a bad monster here for example because we still have to draw another green quest card and they are getting slightly tougher as you can see here so now we have to deal with two of those murlocs as our quest creatures and the independent monster that's been spawned is a naga also a little bit tougher than the other we've seen so far what do we have to do murlocs in the mountains we've got problems with murlocs the dwarven captain tells you this fortress was built to defend against Gnolls, Ogres and the Horde. My mountaineers don't have much use for Murlocs. Might be you could take care of the problem and earn the gratitude of this garrison. The Naga goes here to North Tides Hollow and the two Murlocs go here to Dunga Rock. Okay, so those are pretty much our starting quests. They're all just around the corner of South Shore, but I think I will not go there yet at least. I think I really have to at least level one of those guys up one level. But that's pretty much the starting setup, so everything is going to happen in this corner of the map. One thing I still want to share with you is the merchant deck that's getting randomized at the start of the game. You will add more and more cards into the deck as the game progresses. The problem is the only real item that's currently in there which I could use, because it's the only level one item, is the Minor Agility Potion. It's not that bad, but yeah, there are greater things out there and there are various other cards in this deck. And the way how this works is all those item cards have different bags. So those are the basic items and I think those are the medium items and then there is one more. Yeah, this is the best item you can get and when you revert back to the front side you see it's a level 4 item card and all our heroes can level up to a level of five so you see this is already a pretty sophisticated earthen rod it costs us 14 bucks which is definitely quite a lot but it also adds a hell of a lot of dice to your dice pool so i think let's get started and each of the characters have two actions that they can do throughout the turn there is no real order how you can do that so for example shalara could take both their activations or she could only take one activation then Sendrai takes the next activation but they always only have two of those activations. For your activation you can do a rest action, a town action, a challenge action, a travel action or a training action. So most thing that we will see is the travel action and most likely also the challenge action makes sense and i think the first thing that you're really supposed to do is to take a training action in order to buy some of your cool power cards because right now there are a lot of blank spots on your player screen here and this is where you mainly can assign powers or new item cards the way how this works is each of the players starts the game with a so-called class deck. So this is the class deck for Shalara. On the other side there is also a character from the Horde faction that also has this class deck. But right now this is an alliance player so she can take this class deck. And this class deck consists of power cards and talent cards. Power cards are something that you can gain as part of a town or a training act. So you have to pay money for it and those talent cards you get when you you do a level up right now we have not leveled up so we want to buy some power cards and the three power cards that currently matter to her are those three because they're all level one power cards so we have the battle shout the rent and the heroic strike here is the cost and there are two types of power cards there are instant powers and then there are active powers active powers have been paid in respect to energy when you equip those 
like when I go for it and I want to equip it, I have to pay one power. And those instant powers, you have to pay the energy cost whenever you are about to use them. So those are two instant powers. So every time I want to use the heroic strike, I have to spend two energy in order to use it. But it gives me a red die and a reroll plus one though this can be pretty pretty powerful and i think i will go with both of those not uh, sure if this is really a great idea maybe i should also go for a battle trial because each friendly participating character gains reroll plus one this includes me as well so maybe i should reconsider no i think not i will go for the battle shout and i will also go for the heroic strike here this costs me five golds two plus three that's five and each player starts the game with five gold so Shalara is pretty much broke but this would then later allow her to equip both of those cards for example to two those spots right now i have to put both of those power cards underneath my spell book so only at the end of our turn i would be then allowed to re-equip those items so i can unequip and equip items and or power cards so right now i don't have them available right away nevertheless this was her first activation so we have to flip the first token now i could go over to sendrai but i think i will use her second action right away to take a move action and i think i want to move her here to terran mill in order to challenge this quest creature here. Not sure though if I will do that alone or if I should also send Sandrai for some help. I will definitely think about this, but first of all, let's spend her first action token to do a training action as well. And those are her three level one power cards. We have the Shadow Boat, which give her blue die to her dice pool this is also an instance so she also always have to pay one energy when he when she wants to use it then the demon armor this is an active power which you have to pay when you equip it but it gives her one green defense die and a reroll which is good that this is a second reroll this is, can be really helpful and then there's emulet and of your dice pool step change one four plus into an eight also an instant power and I think I will go for those two here, the Demon Armor and the Shadow Bolt. Again, she's broke as well, but nevertheless, we are allowed to grab those two power cards and put those underneath her spell book like this. There's no limit for the spell books. There's only an item limit for the back here. So you can never have more than three items in your back. Some of the items, I think they ignore that carrying limit. I think like this minor agility potion. Yep, this does not count towards the back limit. But apart from that, it's normally only three. With her second action, she will also move to Terran Mill here in order to support Shai Lara. Not really sure if that's a good idea, to be honest. Again, last time I played it, I think at least two or three years ago. So I cannot quite remember how tough those guys actually are, but I will try it anyway this way. That's pretty much the end of the faction turn because all the heroes have taken their action. Now we come to the character management step. Now we would be able to equip or unequip powers. So I will definitely go for those powers we just acquired. So we will place the heroic strike here. It's an instant so I don't have to spend any energy right away. But for this battle power here I have to pay the cost directly when I equip it but then I can use it on an ongoing basis so I will have to spend this energy so her energy is now down to zero so she will not be able to use the heroic strike right away she has to rest first and then we do pretty much the same for Sandrai so we'll put the demon armor onto this space here this costs her two energy because it's an active power but she can use it as of now and the shadow bolt goes next to this space here and this is another instant which we only have to pay the energy for when we are about to use it 
Last thing to do is to advance the turn marker and due to the nature of this solo game we have to do that twice, so one and two. In this case we cross this space here and this allows us to add one of those common items to the merchant deck. So let's see what we get. And here we see the robe of apprenticeship cloth. We get green die to your dice pools pretty much defense die and a reroll plus two okay this can be pretty helpful but of course it's also a level two item we can buy it that's not a problem but we cannot equip it unless we are a level two character and yeah this was pretty much the very first round of world of warcraft normally in the competitive mode of the game now the horde would take its turn i think the horde always goes first and then it would be the lines but you get the picture i guess but i think i will stop it here because during the next round we will most likely see a combat taking place here we will see an event and another item being added to the merchant deck and this is why i want to stop for today hopefully this is fine to you i think a lot of you wanted to see at least one combat but yeah sorry for this cliffhanger here the next episode will definitely much more fun and much more tense than this boring introductory episode. And yeah, I really do hope you are looking forward to my next episode of World of Warcraft, the board game. I certainly do. I was really happy to find some of those solo rules available and especially this one because it really looks pretty straightforward to me. So I really hope you are tuning in when I return to Lordaeron and yeah, try to defeat Nefarian. And until then, bye bye. <laughs>